obrigada pela presença de vocês aqui para assistir, então, a palestra do nosso querido e renomadíssimo professor Lewis Gordon. Um, eu gostaria de saber se vocês, se, se é necessário que eu faça a tradução simultânea ou se todo mundo é, é, consegue compreender. O professor Lewis Gordon fala super, de uma forma muito clara e devagar, né? Então, a tradução ela acaba sempre comprometendo um pouco, porque a gente vai ter que parar, traduzir, etc. Não flui tão bem. Então, mas se for necessário, se, se, se uh, vocês acharem necessário, eu posso traduzir. Se vocês não acharem necessário, o professor Lewis fala direto. I'm asking people if they need my translation. Ok, Gabriela. Fale direto. I think it would be good to translate anyway, since it'll be on YouTube. So some who don't speak English would be able to watch the YouTube. Ah, uh, okay. So let's do it anyway, mm -hmm. even though there, there are people who could understand the English. Okay. That way the, the larger country could hear it. Ok, então vamos traduzir. Então, pessoal, é, o professor, uh, professor Lewis Gordon também nos enviou um texto para aqueles que não tiveram acesso ao texto, podem entrar em contato também conosco por aquele e-mail no qual nós divulgamos esse evento para enviar o texto do professor uh, Lewis, uh, chamado Black Statics, Black Value. E, então, uh, eu convidei o professor uh, Lewis Gordon para participar desse ciclo de debates sobre direitos humanos e descolonialidade para falar, então, a respeito de estética e teoria crítica da raça, né? Então, thanks very much, Professor Lewis, for being here again with us, to be accepted our invitation. It's a great, great pleasure to welcome you here at Unicinos uh, virtually. That's the way we can do things now, but it's, anyway, a, a great pleasure to... Uh, be with you. Obrigado, Fernanda, and obrigado to the community. Uh, should I begin? Yes, please. Okay. It will be recorded, These so... Are my... Okay. These are my hands, so I'm now going to touch the table. Essas são minhas mãos, eu vou tocar a mesa. I began with beating the drums to summon the ancestors. Eu vou começar tocando um tambor para uh, chamar os ancestrais. This is because I always begin my lectures this way. And this time, it's also because of how difficult things are in the world today. Esse é sempre a for essa é sempre a forma com a qual eu começo as minhas aulas e hoje, em especial, em função de como as coisas estão indo mal no mundo. I send my condolences to all of you. Because, as we know, many people are dying from the COVID-19 pandemic. Eu mando as minhas condolências para todos vocês, porque, como vocês sabem, muitas pessoas estão morrendo de COVID-19. In the United States right now, it's more than 250 million, a oh, thousand or a quarter of a million people who have died. E nos Estados Unidos agora, é, 250 milhões de pessoas já morreram dessa doença. And in Brazil, it's growing to similar numbers as thousands are dying. 
e o Brasil está, o número de pessoas mortas pela doença está crescendo no mesmo patamar? This is sadly because of incompetence and malevolence. Isso acontece em função da incompetência e do e do mal. It's because around the world today we are we are fighting we are living under fascism. Isso porque ao redor do mundo hoje nós estamos vivendo sob o fascismo. And the problem with fascism is not only its cruelty but its refusal to deal with reality. E o problema do fascismo não é exatamente a sua crueldade, mas a dificuldade de lidar com as evidências. No matter how many die, fascists never admit they're wrong. Não importa quantas pessoas morram, os fascistas nunca admitem que estão errados. Some of these observations will show up in my talk. Alguns deles, sorry professor, can you repeat? Yeah, sure. Some of those observations I just made will return in my talk. Observações eu vou retomar na minha fala. So, again, Halito, which is Choctaw for hello, Bom dia, shalom, hotel, and since I'm from Jamaica, I hope you all keeping fine. Um, então, o professor uh, Lewis nos cumprimentou em, em diversas línguas. É, é isso. Espero que todos nós estejamos bem. Não sei se eu peguei, pessoal, mas acho que foi. I used Choctaw because it's an indigenous language and Choctaw é uma é um povo e uma língua indígena dos Estados Unidos. Okay. So I started with the uh, pandemics and we should bear in mind that it's not only COVID-19 is it the pandemic. Eu começo com a pandemia, que não é apenas a, a Covid, mas é uma pandemia. We have the pandemic of colonialism, racism, we have the, colonia, the pandemic of global capitalism, and that leads to the pandemic of climate disaster. Nós vivemos, além da, da pandemia de Covid-19, uma pandemia de colonialismo, de racismo, de, global capitali de capitalismo global e de mudanças climáticas. Life is suffering on our planet. A vida está sofrendo em nosso planeta. It is in our hands to try to make things better. E está em nossas mãos tentar fazer as coisas melhorarem. So, I go now to the topic of this talk, Black Aesthetics, Critical Race Theory. E eu vou agora, então, ao tópico dessa fala, que é um, Estética Negra e uh, Teoria Crítica da Raça. I begin with a demonstration. I will tap... Now, what you just heard was a series of taps. Ele começou com ele começou com um batendo na mesa e agora uh, com um toque e agora é, o que a gente viu é uma série de toques. But what I just did were were two bars or of seven four meter in music. Here it is. You could. 
E o que eu fiz foram sete barras de seven bars of. Uh, I did two bars, two of, bars. Seven, of seven beats. Duas barras de sete batidas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that part you don't need to translate. But seven can be thought of in many ways. Sete pode ser pensamento em muitas formas. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Or, por, pre... yeah. okay, por exemplo, that. um, dois, três, quatro, um, dois, três. Or, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Ou um, dois, um, dois, três, um, dois, três, quatro. What is interesting is that although I tapped the same way each time, the different combinations made you hear different things. Mesmo que eu toque o mesmo número de vezes, a forma como eu faço faz você ouvir de formas diferentes, de forma diferente cada vez que eu bato. This is a clue to how we bring meaning to the world. Uh, so, this is a clue for? Yeah, this is a clue for how we bring meaning to the world. Essa é uma pista de como nós trazemos uh, significado, como nós fazemos uh, significado para o mundo, como nós é, damos significado ao mundo. Some people think music must be played one way, but decolonizing music makes us see we play music in many ways. Algumas pessoas acham que a música pode ser tocada de uma única forma, mas descolonizar a música significa tocá-la de diversas formas, de variadas formas. Here is an example in four bars. Aqui um exemplo em quatro barras. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 You hear, you see how much life was in the last vocês viram quanta vida nas últimas duas now I give another example another Agora eu vou dar um outro exemplo I, many years ago I was to give a lecture in a big uh, room with a piano muitos anos atrás ele deu uma uma, uma palestra em uma sala, numa grande sala onde havia um piano. My host stopped me when I walked over to the piano and they told me it was because the piano was out of tune. Um, os convidados, os, os anfitriões dele é, disseram para ele não, toma, não tocar porque o piano estava fora de tom. I said, don't worry. And I sat down and I played the piano. Ele disse, não, não, não se incomodem. Eu sentei e uh, não se preocupem. Então eu sentei e toquei o piano. Eventually, uh, when the audience came, they applauded, and my hosts were shocked. No fim, uh, eu toquei e a plateia aplaudiu. E os meus anfitriões vieram e ficaram chocados. They said, we thought the piano was out of tune. Nós pensamos que o piano estava fora de tom. And I answered, it is out of tune. 
isso tava e ele respondeu tava fora de tom and then i explained even if you're out of tune you could still make music e aí eu então eu disse mesmo estando desafinado ele ainda assim pode tocar música that is an allegory of how we should think beyond coloniality. Essa é uma alegoria de como a gente pode pensar além da colonialidade. Coloniality makes us think of people who are out of tune. A colonialidade faz com que nós pensemos que as pessoas estão desafinadas, estão fora do tom. But those people should never forget that they could still make music. Só que essas pessoas nunca podem esquecer que elas ainda assim podem fazer música. So I give now a third example from art. Então agora eu vou dar um terceiro exemplo a partir da arte. There are two paintings behind me. One by an indigenous woman from El Salvador and the other a black woman who lives in New Mexico. Ah, tem duas, dois quadros atrás de mim, um de uma mulher indígena de El Salvador e outro de uma mulher uh, do Novo México. Two worlds, the indigenous and the black behind me and both women understand that we live in the world of the meetings of many worlds. Há dois mundos atrás, nesses quadros, o um mundo de mulheres indígenas e negras e duas mulheres que entendem que elas um, encontram... Sorry, I, I forgot the last part. The, sure, the, we... the both women... And we live in a meeting of many worlds. Entendem que elas vivem num encontro de muitos mundos. But they understand the value of the world from below. Mas elas entendem o valor do mundo desde baixo, esse mundo de baixo. Colonialism make black people and indigenous people into problems. O colonialismo coloca as pessoas negras e as pessoas indígenas em problemas. But we should understand the difference between being a problem and being human beings who face problems. Só que nós temos que entender a diferença entre ser um problema e ser um ser humano que enfrenta problemas. This is the context of black philosophy and African diasporic philosophy. Esse, esse é o contexto da filosofia africana e da filosofia uh, diaspórica africana. Ok. So, first, black and Africana philosophy. Primeiro, a filosofia uh, negra e africana. Black philosophy and African diasporic philosophy address at least three problematics. A filosofia africana diaspórica e a filosofia negra é, endereçam pelo menos três problemáticas. The first is what does it mean to be a human being? The second what is freedom and the third is what um, is justification any longer possible é, essas problemáticas são o que primeiro o que significa ser um ser humano a segunda o que significa liberdade e a terceira uh, Uh, sobre a uh, qual justificativa 
Ainda pode haver? We ask what is human because colonialism dehumanizes, racism dehumanizes, slavery dehumanizes. Nós perguntamos o que significa ser ser humano porque o colonialismo, a escravidão e o racismo desumanizam. We talk about freedom because when you're colonized, enslaved, you are, you're, I'm sorry. We talk about freedom because when you're colonized and enslaved, you are not free. Nós falamos em liberdade porque quando você é escravizado e colonizado, você não é livre. And finally, we talk about reason and justification because colonialism used knowledge, science and reason to rationalize colonialism and enslavement and racism. Nós falamos em razão e justificação porque o colonialismo usa conhecimento, ciência e razão para racionalizar o colonialismo e a escravidão. Ok. E and, and because of that, a crisis emerges in which reason and justification seem no longer justified. Por causa disso, uma crise emerge onde a razão e a justificação parecem não mais... Uh, seems to be no longer... Justified. justified. Parecem não ser mais justificáveis. We can call that the coloniality of knowledge, the coloniality of reason, the coloniality of thought. Nós chamamos isso de colonialidade do saber, colonialidade da razão e colonialidade do pensamento. Now, in response to that, much of black thought um, took a critical stand. Em resposta a isso, muito uh, do pensamento negro assume uma postura crítica. The colonial and racist world only look at black people as negative. O mundo racista e colonial apenas olha para o negro como um, look at, uh, just as uh, Neg a negative. negative, é como uma negatividade. Então o colonialismo e o, o mundo colonial e racista apenas olha o negro como uma negatividade. The Philosopher, sociologist, and historian and poet W. E. B. Du Bois call that double consciousness. Aí, um, o filósofo, sociólogo, uh, uh, escritor William Du Bois chama isso de dupla consciência. Is when black people only see ourselves as seen by people who hate us. É como as pessoas negras se olham através dos olhos daqueles que nos odeiam. That's when we see ourselves as problems. Então nós olhamos a nós mesmos como problemas. But there is another kind of double consciousness. Mas há uma outra forma de dupla consciência. That other kind is when we act But I'm sorry, that other kind is when we realize there is something wrong with a society that makes us into problems. É, a outra forma da dupla consciência é quando nós percebemos que alguma coisa é errada na sociedade que nos vê como problemas. That critical position is called potentiated double consciousness. Essa... Essa, essa perspectiva crítica é chamada de dupla consciência potentiated, a dupla consciência potencializada. 
That position is dialectical. Essa posição é dialética. It is dialectical because it addresses the contradictions of the society. Ela é dialética porque ela endereça a contradição da ela aponta para a contradição da própria sociedade. Once we make that critique, we move from the black in the lower case in Portuguese negro with the little n to black with the capital B in Portuguese with the capital N. Uh -huh. é, quando nós fazemos essa crítica, nós nos, nós nos movemos do negro com N minúsculo para o, o negro com N maiúsculo ou preto com P maiúsculo. Né? The first is an effect of history. The second is an agent of history. O primeiro, o negro com N minúsculo, é efeito da história. O segundo, com B maiúsculo, é o... The, the second is An the agent. agent. The agent. É o agente da história. Now we move to aesthetics. Agora nós vamos falar de estética. In aesthetics, we can look at those three problematics in an interesting way. É, na estética, nós, problemas, nós podemos ver esses dois problemas numa, de uma forma interessante. The colonial world transformed Africans and many other people in the global south into blacks. O mundo colonial transformou os africanos e muitos povos do sul global em pretos. This means blacks are indigenous to the Euro-modern colonial world. Isso significa que os pretos são os indígenas uh, do, do mundo euromoderno. Ou da euromodernidade. But that Euro-modern world rejects black people. Mas esse mundo euromoderno rejeita os as pessoas negras. This creates a unique melancholia. E isso cria uma melancolia única. It is singular. the it is the man, sure, it's the melancholia of being indigenous to a world that rejects us. É a melancolia de ser indígena num mundo que nos rejeita. If we accept that world, then there is one conclusion for us to disappear. Se você aceita esse mundo, há, há uma... There is a conclusion or collusion? Yeah, there, if we accept there is one conclusion we black people must disappear se nós se 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 nós aceitamos esse mundo há uma conclusão para nós nós temos que desaparecer but that is anti black racism um, mas isso é o o o racismo anti negro But there is another solution. The other solution is to reject that world and build a different world. A outra solução é rejeitar esse mundo e construir um novo mundo. In that different world, there is a different kind of black that belongs to the future. Nesse diferente mundo, há um diferente tipo de pessoa negra que pertence ao futuro. If you belong to the future, it, legit, it legitimates your present. Se você pertence ao futuro, você legitima o seu presente. Now, that is an example of moving from the small idea of black 
to the agent of history version of black. Esse é um exemplo de como sair uh, do, do, do negro com N minúsculo, que é o efeito da história, para o negro com N maiúsculo, que é o agente da história. So here is where aesthetics come in. E aqui é que entra a estética. Aesthetics, as I am using it, connect to the human creative expression of freedom. A estética, como eu entendo, está conectada com a criatividade humana, uh, human creativity, yeah. sorry, com yeah. a, a, a forma de se expressar, a forma humana de se expressar criativamente. It is a rejection of metaphysical homelessness. Isso é uma rejeição da metafísica da um, homelessness, uh, in Portuguese, let me see, um, da... Um, not being at home. É, não estar em casa, né? É uma rejeição da metafísica do não se sentir em casa. But it recognizes the need for political action. Isso reconhece a, a um, the meeting of political action, o encontro com a é, o encontro com a ação política. É. Okay. So, before I continue, I want to say something about aesthetics in colonial studies. Antes de eu continuar, eu quero falar alguma coisa sobre a estética nos estudos descoloniais. There are decolonial theorists who reject aesthetics and they but they prefer what they call spaces. Spaces. Há teóricos teóricos descoloniais que rejeitam a estética e preferem é, sorry, uh, estesis. Estesis. Uh, yeah, and I'll put it in the chat so you could see how it's spelled. And Okay. Uh, oh, I can't use the chat. Okay, so we'll just leave it. But aesthesis. Aesthesis. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so I'll get back to my point um, in a second. Okay, so the problem is both are Greek words. The problem is that um, uh, o problema é que as duas são palavras gregas. They refer to the senses. Elas se referem a senso. Aesthetics tends to be the philosophical discussion of art and beauty. A estética é a discussão filosófica sobre a arte e a beleza. If we make aesthetics colonial, we will have the same problem of making philosophy colonial. Se nós fazemos a estética colonial, nós teremos o mesmo problema de fazer a filosofia colonial. The correct response is to decolonize philosophy and thus decolonize aesthetics. A resposta correta é descolonizar a filosofia e descolonizar a estética. The colonizing of philosophy is when we presume philosophy must be western. Uh, colonizar a filosofia é pressupor que a filosofia é exclusivamente ocidental. The mistake is historical because there were thousands of years of philosophy before even ancient Greeks. O erro é histórico porque há milhares de anos mesmo de filosofia mesmo antes dos gregos. When I teach my introduction to philosophy, I teach more than a thousand years of African philosophy before the first Greek philosopher. Quando eu dou meu curso de introdução à filosofia, eu ensino mil anos de filosofia 
é, africana antes da filosofia grega. The colonial mentality makes us think there cannot be African, indigenous and Asian philosophy. A mentalidade colonial nos faz acreditar que não existe ou que não possa existir filosofia africana, indígena e asiática. In other words, we should reject Eurocentrism. Em outras palavras, nós devemos rejeitar o eurocentrismo. If we turn to aesthetics, the problem is as follows. Se nós nos vamos para a estética, o problema é o seguinte. If black and indigenous people could not have aesthetic experience, we would be locked in what's called seriousness. Se, uh, se os negros e os índios não podem ter experiência estética, nós estaríamos trancados, locked in, seriousness. Nas, em seriedade, na seriedade. What this means is that we would be incapable of art. Isso significaria que nós seríamos incapazes de fazer arte. The It would mean that we never play. Isso significaria que nós nunca poderíamos tocar. If you think back to the example I gave about the piano and drumming and the paintings, it would mean that for us there is only one way to to make beats, one way to sing, one way to paint. Voltando aos exemplos da, da pintura, do piano e da, e da bateria, é, da, da, da percussão, isso significaria que nós poderíamos ter apenas uma forma de, de tocar uh, percussão, de cantar e de pintar. That would be the old anthropological stereotype of reducing us to rituals. Essa é uma forma, é, é um estereótipo antigo de nos reduzir a, a uma única forma de... Um, the uh, only uh, way of... Sorry. Of reducing us, our practices to rituals. To rituals. É, é uma forma de, de nos reduzir a, ritua a rituais. É né? uma forma antropológica uh, velha de nos reduzir a, a rituais. So, let me offer a different way of looking at art. Uh, me, me mostrar uma outra forma de, uh, de se fazer arte. I introduced this in my book Fanon and the Crisis of European Man. Eu introduzi isso no meu livro Fanon e a Crise do Homem Europeu. I call it the aesthetics of everyday life. Eu chamei a estética do dia a dia. Many of us don't ask why do human beings create art? Muitos de nós uh, não pergunta como as pessoas, como os seres humanos criam arte. The answer is linked to our existence. A, a resposta é tardia para nossa existência. A difficult um, realization for human beings is that reality would be fine without us. Uma difícil uh, percepção para os ser, seres humanos é que a realidade pode ser encontrada fora de nós, mesmo sem nós. There were billions of years without human beings. Houve bilhões de anos sem os seres humanos. And a time would come when there would be billions of years without us again. E o tempo que virá poderá ser de bilhões de anos sem que nós estejamos aqui. 
In short, the universe or the pluriverse has no reason to care about us. A questão é que o universo ou o pluriverso não tem nenhuma razão para se importar conosco. This, for many of us, is difficult to bear. Isso, para muitos de nós, é difícil de suportar. We live, in other words, in a world that may that that doesn't have to be our home. Nós vivemos em um mundo que não tem que ser a nossa casa. Okay. So, what we do is we create culture, art, language, in short, human reality. É, o que nós fazemos é criar arte, criar uh, cultura. Uh, sorry, professor, there is someone sure. with the microphone open. I, I got, um, I, 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 I got lost. Sure. Can you, can you whoever, repeat, please? Sure, if we could ask them to close their microphone. Did, did they close it? Yeah, sure. I closed, I closed, sure. yeah. Sure. In other words, we human beings created a world of meaning. Nós seres humanos criamos um mundo de significados. That world of meaning is our home. Esse mundo de significados é a nossa casa. This is why when many of us move into our apartment or house, The first thing we do is decorate. Isso por, é por isso que muitos de nós, quando estamos, nos movemos em nossa casa, em nosso apartamento, o que nós fazemos é decorá-lo. What we are doing is transforming a space into a place. O que nós fazemos é transformar um espaço num lugar. Ok. And so. Um, if we go back to the colonial world, se nós retornamos ao mundo colonial, what black people and indigenous people had to do was to create meaning to remember our humanity. O que os, os, as pessoas negras e indígenas têm que fazer é criar significados para lembrar o seu mundo, to create meaning, to... Remember our humanity. Para lembrar nossa humanidade. Ou seja, criar significados a todo momento para lembrar a, a sua humanidade. This is in our music, from blues to reggae to samba... To hip hop. Uh, isso é o que faz a música a negra com o reggae, com o samba, com o hip hop uh, e muitos outros ritmos. It is there in our paintings, in our food, and even how we use language. É isso que nós fazemos com as nossas pinturas, a nossa comida e inclusive com a própria linguagem. What we are doing is treating our black lives. I'm sorry. This is because we live in a world that treats black lives as not mattering. Isso porque nós vivemos num mundo que trata as vidas negras como algo que não importa. That world from slavery to colonialism, squeezes our neck and tries to make us not breathe. Esse mundo que vai da escravidão ao colonialismo is, uh, afoga nosso pescoço e não nos deixa respirar. It is no accident that fascists and colonialists 
use asphyxiation on black lives. Não é uma coincidência que o fascismo e o colonialismo usem a asfixia para matar os negros. Because breathing is about life and right now we struggle to breathe. Isso porque respirar é viver e por isso que a todo momento nós lutamos para respirar. At the symbolic level Black arts, indigenous art, is an effort symbolically to breathe. É, no nível, é por isso que no nível simbólico, a arte negra e indígena, ela simboliza a necessidade de respirar. Black art is another way of saying black lives matter. A, a arte negra é uma forma de dizer que as vidas negras importam. So, I'm going to now conclude with um, main points. Agora eu vou concluir com dois principais pontos. The first is on the implications for critical race theory. Primeiro são as implicações para a teoria crítica da raça. The three problematics of our humanity, freedom and justification are in critical race theory. As três problemáticas é, relacionadas à questão humano, que é a liberdade, o que é a justificação, estão na teoria crítica da raça. But critical race theory tends to focus on the first because of its focus on race. É, mas a teoria crítica da raça tende a focar no primeiro problema, o que é o, que é, uh, o ser humano, porque ela foca justamente na questão da raça. Race makes us ask, what is it to be human? Raça nos faz ser aquilo que o ser humano é. Que nos faz ser the, como seres humanos. The second conclusion I want to make is about normative life and action. A segunda conclusão uh, que eu gostaria de fazer é sobre uh, a vida normativa e a ação. Colonialism is a practice of disempowerment. Colonialismo é uma prática de desempoderamento. Political life requires power. A vida política exige poder. Thus, colonialism and racism are efforts to disempower black and indigenous people and block us from political life. Colonialismo e o racismo são esforços para desempoderar os povos indígenas e as pessoas negras e bloquear a sua vida política. To fight against colonialism and racism requires acquiring power to us to live our humanity. Lutar contra o colonialismo e contra o racismo exige adquirir poder para viver a nossa humanidade. And this is why it requires also the power of meaning. Isso porque nós exigimos o poder do significado, da significação. This is why all dimensions, me, I'm sorry, many dimensions of what we are come together in political practice, art, struggle, meaning. Uh, isso, é, é por isso que uh, muitas dimensões do que nós somos, many dimensions of we are, 
of what we are come ah. together. Então, é por isso que muitas dimensões do, do que nós somos vêm junto em significações, em arte, em música, em cultura. The question becomes not which one is most important, but why all of them must be utilized. Must be? Must be utilized or used. Ah, Uh, utilizando. A questão não é, é não é. Sorry, Professor Gordon, I, sure. I got lost. <laughs> It's okay. The this is why the, the, the question isn't which is most important. Uh, okay. I'm going to do it short. That way it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. So if you just start with that. Uh -huh. A questão não é, a questão aqui então não é o que é o mais importante, mas The right question is to learn how they must work together. A correta questão é saber que nós uh, uh, que nós devemos uh, estar juntos, trabalhar juntos. So this leads to the radical love that is implicit in political action and art. Isso leva a um amor radical que está implícito na ação política e na arte. Colonial love is narcissistic and only wants reproductions of itself. O amor colonial é narcisista e apenas quer a reprodução de si mesmo. But radical love understands what it is to love the freedom of others. Mas o amor radical entende o que é o amor pela liberdade dos outros. It is not the reproduction of the self. Isso não é a reprodução do mesmo. It is the celebration of the right of others to exist. Essa é a cele... o amor radical é a celebração do direito do outro de existir. That's why all political action ultimately affects those whom we will never meet or know. Uh, é por isso, então, que a, a, sorry, sorry, Professor Lewis. Sure, that is why political actions... Oops. Oops. Mm -hmm. Someone is... With the microphone yeah. is open? Yeah. Yes, Daniel. Okay. okay. That is why political action always affects people we will never meet and we will never know. Uh, é por isso então que a ação política sempre afeta pessoas uh, que nunca é, que nunca sabem e que nunca se encontram. So I conclude with The drum beat. E eu vou concluir então batendo, uh, fazendo percussão. The first drum was our heartbeat. A primeira batida é a batida do coração. And that heartbeat went from one generation to another over millions of years. E essa batida do coração, ela vai de uma geração a outra por milhões de anos. And our heartbeat, if we make the right decisions, will be inherited by generations to come. E as nossas batidas do coração, se fizerem a, 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 se tomarem a decisão certa, se fizerem a escolha certa, passarão, serão herdadas por, pelas gerações que virão. But if we do our work well, they will create 
their own beats. E se nós fizermos o nosso trabalho bem, é, eles criarão as suas próprias batidas. And they will be grateful for the freedom we afforded them. E eles serão gratos pela liberdade que nós é, disponibilizamos, que nós demos a eles. Thank you, I'm done. Muito obrigada. Muito Thanks. obrigada. Thanks very much, Professor Lewis, and I'm so sorry for my bad translation, but sometimes it's hard to no, get don't concentrated. Worry. <laughs> don't worry, they will mix my English and yours, and I tried to make the words clear, so they should be fine. Yeah, I think I think everyone could understand. Uh, well, so people, now uh, it's open uh, for you to make questions for Professor Leos. I think we have more um, half an hour to discuss uh, the topics that Professor Leos brought to us. And um, let me see, I think. Um, I don't know. It says lista presencia. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, before our guests uh, make you a question, I would like to address uh, you one. It's more a, well, first of all, mm, congratulations for your, your talk. It's always a, a pleasure to hear you and to, to, to learn from you. And uh, I really, really appreciated your, your article on black statics. And I've been discussing with my students um, the problem of coloniality and the problem of... Uh, and, and coloniality always connected to the problem of epistemology. But I'm, I'm, I'm realizing that maybe I, I, I don't know if I'm, if, uh, if I'm right, if, if it's a good insight, but I think that before epistemology, I mean, what's, ro what's uh, wrong and, and, and right, for example, is uh, the aesthetics. I mean, what is beautiful and what's ugly uh, matters, counts uh, more than what's false and true in order to determine, uh, for example, uh, who counts for the human. I'm, I don't know if I, if I can uh, express uh, my idea, but what, what I mean is that uh, I think the problem is to determine who is human, who counts as human, and uh, who, who does not count as human. The question of beauty the question of appearance is 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 much more maybe is is more important than to the power to 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 issue knowledge for example to create knowledge but the power to say who is beautiful who is ugly uh, comes before the power to say what's true and what's false yeah what what I would like to say about that, uh, Fernanda, um, and thank you also for inviting me to be here. It's always a pleasure to get to converse with you in the community. Euro-modern thought has a one and uh, versus all the others mentality. Mm -hmm. It to me. Yeah. And centered epistemology, it centered knowledge and thus centered science and knowing. But the problem is that that centering focused simply on what was true or false and thus it used metaphor Right. Mm -hmm. Even the word theory is from the word for sight. Theorein means to view, to see. Mm -hmm. But, and 
a lot of that view attacked the world of myth, which it also saw in people of the global south. But here's the problem. How can you see with meaning? Mm -hmm. Myth is from the ancient word muthos, from mouth, through which you tell stories to have meaning. So myth and meaning are linked. Mm -hmm. And art values are about meaning. You take meaning out of values and they disappear. Mm -hmm. So the question connects to my conclusion. The philosopher Alan Locke, the African-American philosopher, said human, be human beings cannot live in a valueless world. What is the point of knowledge of a world we cannot live in? Mm -hmm. So meaning and art are linked. And that's why I said we must think of them together, their relationship, not which one versus the other. We need to know, feel, understand, and we live in meaning. Mm hmm Yeah. The sight, the, the, the taste, uh, it's, uh, it create, it, it's meaningful for our, for the way we think, we reason. Um, yeah. And we create new worlds. And create Political, new worlds. Yeah. Liberation, the struggle for liberation is not simply a struggle to get rid of an oppressor. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle to build a meaningful life. Mm -hmm. That's what Catherine Walsh argues when she talks mm -hmm. about decoloniality. Mm -hmm. She says decoloniality is for a livable existence. Mm -hmm. And the problem of Western, Western epistemology is to makes us to think that our reason, our knowledge, is totally independent from the way we, we perceive, we realize the world that is around us. I mean, the, 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 the sense of, of the, the, way, uh, um, the, appear, the, the way the world appeared to us, uh, as if it could be neutral, objective, and totally free from the, the, um, the influences, the, I mean, the way we relate to the world. Yes, and that, and that leads to a contradictory metaphysics. Mm -hmm. Because if you could be absolutely separate from the world, <clears throat> then you could be um, a thing unto yourself. You could be a substance, or to put it bluntly, you could be mm -hmm. a god. You could be a god. But human beings are not gods. Human beings are relationships. We're not things. So that means even knowledge is a relationship with the world, not to put yourself outside of relationship with the world. Mm -hmm. You see the problem? If you were yeah. truly outside of relationship with the world, then you will know nothing. And so mm -hmm. part of decolonial practice is actually to connect ourselves with the world. And I'll give you an example. Right now, because of COVID-19, we must be physically distant. Mm -hmm. Neoliberalism and colonial language ask us to be socially distant. But social distance and physical distance are not the same thing. As we know, if you, say, are in a troubled marriage, 
although you could be in the bed together, you could be socially distant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, similarly, although we are thousands of miles apart, we're physically distant, but we're using this technology yeah. to be socially close. Yeah. So this forum is to get rid of social social distance by being socially close but remain physically distant mm -hmm. okay and the thing about social closeness is that although i talked about art and i talked about language there are other elements to consider particularly in psychoanalysis okay mm -hmm. and that is because for me to reach you, every one of you, it means I must get rid of the separation between us, which means the meaning, the words, the language, as we speak with each other, is inside each other. And this is one of the things about language that psychoanalysts know. Language is erotic because it's intimate. The problem with many people today is they don't know the difference between sex and intimacy, between sex and erotics. Although sex could make people physically close, if it doesn't have erotic or intimate elements, they are distant, you see? Mm -hmm. And although people may not be physically, in other words, in touch with each other, they could be intimate because of sociality. But the colonial mentality is obsessed with barriers, protection. Yeah. And, and so it wants to eliminate the social. Mm -hmm. And so... What we need to understand is that when we struggle for freedom, we're also struggling for a social world. And this is why, even though this is a forum that's academic, you know, knowledge, many of us also get online, many of us participate because we need the communication, mm -hmm. see? And so the human world is always, always more than one thing happening at once. We are sharing ideas, we're communicating, and we're reminding ourselves in the communication of our common humanity. Mm -hmm. I, I see think, the questions. Yeah, we have two questions. I think first one oh. is Andrea. Yeah. I think you, you can. Mm -hmm. OK, the shift from black uh, be. Um, be yeah. Oh, my God. Lowercase. Yeah, lowercase, lowercase. Yeah, uh, the shift from, ba from black, lowercase to black uh, capital case. It's also a shift, it seems, from the use of the word black as a term to define a colonial event or process of constant, continual disempowerment to the term black as rightfully a category that describes, can rightfully describe, a group of people. Can you talk more about this shift to an understand of the word black with capital B? as an adjective that can justifiably and truly describe a person or a group of people? Great, and can I hear the next question too? The next question is... Um, uh, I have a question, it's Kakosi, about a small idea of black and great idea of black. Professor Leo's related a small idea of black with history and uh, the great idea of black with future. Uh, he said that people, that black and indigenous peoples uh, has to invite the future. 
uh, to be in the present. However, in the African philosophy, it's very important in the past. Um, according to John Embiid, almost almost there's no that the future there's no exist only exist future that's close because this is an event uh, so how to how to invent ourselves uh, forgetting the past the history okay well the short answer to the first question is twofold the short answer is the active commitment to build a future. That is a political commitment. And remember when I said that colonialism and racism wants to make black and indigenous people not have access to political life. Mm -hmm. So that requires limiting political life so much that it becomes a war on politics. In Brazil right now, the fascists are fighting against politics. And if you notice, black and indigenous people are the center of their obsession. Mm -hmm. but, the, it, but the effect is on everybody. And that is because the only way black and indigenous people can actually be liberated is through the radicalization of democracy. You see, a society that excludes black and indigenous people is not a properly democratic society. So the way I put it is the fight for black lives is a fight for democracy. Mm -hmm. And so that capital B, although we, I said black, the irony is it transcends black because it's fighting for the liberation of democracy and political life. You see, I wrote uh, an essay called um, on Steve Bantu Biko in South Africa and consciousness. I talk about black consciousness as political consciousness. And I just wrote a book, it's coming out next year, called um, Fear of Black Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because I argue the fear of black consciousness is the fear of the liberation of political life and democracy. I, I give a short version of it in a book called Freedom, Justice and Decolonization, which will be published in January by Routledge. But so for those of you who want to read ahead, that's one. But the short version is what I was hinting at is the capital B, not the lowercase, is about political action, political life. It's mm -hmm. the liberation of politics. And that's why today is a unique period in history because white people who have joined black people are fighting because they understand that democracy and freedom are at stake if we let the enemies of democracy and freedom rule. Now, for the other question, John Mabite, um, an old friend, um, yeah, he passed away a few years ago. Uh, he was talking about specifically East African philosophy in Kenya. What I'm talking about right now is black, which is different. Uh, many Africans were made into black people, but African people had their own ideas independent of Europe. Just like indigenous people of Abayala or Amerindians have their own ideas. They don't need white people or Europeans to tell them who they are. But that is a different question. When I teach African philosophy, when I teach philosophy where I'm looking for ideas 
from Africa, then I need to look at what they said in the past and also what indigenous Amerindians say in the past. But we should bear in mind that that is um, um, communicating what is relevant to the present. You see? If we make them into problems, then we presume they have no knowledge to offer. But if we don't do that, then we learn from each other what we have to offer. Uh, Mobite, or bite, because it's a very soft mite, um, didn't exactly say that Bantu-speaking people didn't believe in a future. What he said is that their actions were such that they weren't based on predicting the long-term future. He wasn't talking about it in terms of crops or science and those. He was talking about it in the sense of focusing on the actual actions we make. If you look at my argument about political commitment, it is the same thing. A political commitment to the next, to the generations to come means I am acting for someone to receive a life that I myself will never live. When you are willing to do that, that is why I call it. Excellent. Do you have, do we have more questions? I think not. I have, uh, I have just one uh, last question, Professor. Oh no, sorry. There is someone with the hands up. Andrea, Andrea please, Kauf. please. Mm -hmm. Hello, this is Andrea Kaufmanberry. Um, Hi, are we of the same tribe? Are you Jewish? Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> my my whole maternal line is, but I am also the daughter of a former Catholic priest. So my family were Jewish and Catholic, but my maternal line is Jewish. So the answer is, <laughs> we're both Jewish. <laughs> Um, you said one of the problematics is um, very, very, very broadly, you said justification, period. Um, and I'd love to hear more about how those of us who are using, who are not using aesthetics properly understood in terms of art or music, but maybe in my work, for instance, massive longitudinal data sets, um, and are bound to a history of science and social science that is based on the, I mean, quite frankly, the Cartesian conception of justification, right? Um, how what you've presented today um, affects our work, our de decolonizing of the social sciences, our decolonizing of statistics, right? Um, because we come up, all of us end up coming up against the wall at some point in every article where we have to change the structure of our argumentation from I will prove to you that to the analysis I will now show you is best understood if we presuppose that racism is a, an oppressive, dehumanizing social process, right? Do you see how those two? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about that's that's where aesthetics is for me in my work, right? Aesthetics is twisting the process of justification to 
still prove in the best way I can, but it's a proof that relies upon an if then statement that is a different kind of if then statement. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I have uh, three points to make in terms of what you just stated. The first one is I only, um, I've written actually a lot of my work, most of my work is about the human being's relationship to reality and the many ways we have of avoiding it. <laughs> okay, so that's why I write on racism, sexism, colonialism, etc. Those are the ways of avoiding reality. It's like the bully, right? The narcissistic bully tries to force you to give him the image of himself he prefers. White supremacy is the beating down of people of color to make white people believe they're superior, in a nutshell. Now, I only brought up, I decided today to focus on the aesthetic part, mainly because it is one that is often disparaged, pushed to the side. That's why Fernanda was responding in the way she was. In fact, it's linked into stuff with feminist theory, because if you think about it, um, some of the language that was used in the 19th century to talk about sciences, they refer to the natural sciences, get this, as the hard sciences, and everything else as soft. <laughs> you see the masculinist language there. That, now, the thing is, so what I was trying to do is to eradicate that hard, soft dichotomy. Get rid of that nonsense. There, there's, there's a way of using language that blocks our capacity to think, okay? And one of the things I wanted to bring up is whatever struggles we're in, whether it's a human rights struggle, whether, it, you know, what you, you name it, you know, whether it is about, about lands, when it's about uh, cultural dignity, they all must come down to a world produced in which people can actually live. And what I was trying to bring out then is the importance of decolonizing normative life and aesthetics is linked to it. You notice I didn't say morals, right? And Fernanda and I were speaking before, we were talking about the right and the left. The right basically just wanna get rid of everything and control it. But the left is endangered today because the left, too many people on the left fail to think through what political action is. Many people on the left think about moral action and they become so moralistic that they can't work together because nobody is morally pure enough. So I decided to go with aesthetics to deal with norms because that's different, you see? That is more, that is where, where communication and shared understanding is both open, but at the same time connected. Now, the second part is, you ask a question on which I've written quite a lot. I wrote a book called Disciplinary Decadence. The, it's available in English and there's a version in Spanish. Uh, I, was very, it, it, I was very happy that it was published by Abiy Ayala Press and also in Chiapas. But the short version is disciplinary decadence is when you treat your discipline as if it's created by a god. And if your discipline were created by a god, then that means the methods are perfect. You see what I'm getting at? And if the methods are perfect, you simply have to apply the method. So this has led to the fetishizing of method. Many of you in the social sciences know there are people who aren't even interested in what you're saying. They just want to know your method. In fact, there are lots of published writings in top journals in the social sciences that are not saying a damn thing. And it's because they were able to be published because their methods checked out. You see what I'm saying? But what Du Bois, Franz Fanon, Anton Giap, Anna Julia Cooper, I could go through a long list of theorists, all the way through to Jane Anna Gordon in her book, Creolizing Political Theory. What they realized 
and this is what I argued in disciplinary decadence, is that if you're going to start by simply following your method, what you are doing is trying to squeeze reality into your discipline. If reality doesn't fit your discipline, you begin to complain, what's wrong with reality? It's the same thing that was done in the social sciences to indigenous and black people. If indigenous and black people don't fit the received social science, the response was to ask, what's wrong with those people? Instead of saying, maybe something's wrong with my discipline and my method. And the obvious thing that's wrong with the discipline and the method is there is no discipline that can encompass all of reality. Because if that were such a discipline, you know what we'd have to call that discipline? God. <laughs> but we're human beings. Disciplines are created by human beings. What I argued is there's a thing called a suspension of disciplinarity. This is when you suspend your discipline for the sake of reality. But this means that a discipline should communicate with another discipline and may go beyond it and create something new. Most of the disciplines we have were created because of the limitations of the disciplines that preceded them. You see? So for the social scientific question, um, the problem with Cartesianism is twofold. One, Cartesianism is based on an old substance metaphysics. It's one of the leeches of Aristotelianism. But two, it also has something that has blocked a lot of clear thinking. And this is something that other forms of thought, particularly in the global south, realize. And that thing is the ego. You see, the, because you see the problem, right? If you turn your ego into the world, now you're inside something that you have to get outside of. However, if you let go of the ego and you're now communicative, you're in relationships, then you're able to deal with questions in a different way. Now you're able to realize that every act of communication is an act of transformation because if a human being is a relationship, then different relationships are producing new kinds of human beings. And that means the methods we have to develop must be richer. If we go back to the beginning of my talk, I was actually doing something very philosophical with my tapping. I was actually demonstrating a transcendental philosophical argument. But I didn't bother to call it that. Because each of you could understand that a condition for the possibility of you knowing what I did when I tapped out my beats is the communication of it. You see what I'm saying? And when you hear it, you see, if I told you in advance, you're going to hear something different, then you would get into your ego and try to hear the same. But if I don't tell you and simply play it, then you have let go of your ego and you admit the world before you. You see? And that's why you could hear um, seven, you could in as four, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, that's still seven. Or you could hear it in this way. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. But you see, now you begin to realize there are infinite number of ways to communicate meaning. But the main thing is we hear it together. That's the thing. So what we should do right now is we should know the scope of social science. Certain social scientific questions work relative to a specific domain, which is the point you were making. You were making the point about an hypothesis given the conditions of a specific domain. But reality is 
beyond any one domain. Right? This is a domain, but this domain is in the domain of the room I'm speaking to you in, which is in the domain of the neighborhood I'm speaking to you in, which is in the domain of the planet on which we are, which is in the domain of the solar system in which it goes on and on. But those are all domains, but they're not all of reality. And what we, if we're interested, really interested in learning together when we produce knowledge, is we, are we need to communicate the complexity of how they relate to each other. I know that was a long answer, Andrea. Uh, I hope you don't mind me calling you Andrea, but uh, but but uh, but write me. We can keep in touch, and I could send you references because I write on evidence, domains, methodologies. I teach a course in philosophy of social science. I teach a course on race in the human sciences. Uh, but a lot of my work is about the very question you ask: How in the world do we do and communicate? Uh, not only scientific knowledge, but other forms, including aesthetic ones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Professor Leos, thanks very much. But before we we um, we close our meeting, I would just ask you some a, a question about and I don't know if it matters or not, but for me, uh, it was a question that um, that I had when I when I read your your text. Uh, what is the place or space that um, Eurocentrism or white epistemology reserves to the to the black and indigenous peoples in aesthetic terms? It is it is it ugliness or invisibility? Uh, my answer is twofold. Uh, the first thing, my, my answer is connected to a position I take on racism, which is the biggest fear of racists isn't whether we love them or hate them, it's whether they are irrelevant. If they become irrelevant, they have no power over us. They just become one point of view among others. So the first thing is that we should understand if we look at European knowledge as just simply a set of knowledge that is that is at times useful and at other times useless, just like knowledge, mm -hmm. then we're freed of a Eurocentric grip. The other thing is we don't want to stereotype people. And what I mean by that is it's interesting when we look at Europeans, we tend to look at Europeans through the lens of people who are not everyday European people. When we give criticisms of the Enlightenment, when we give criticisms of philosophy and science, we're talking about professional academics. <laughs> we're talking about people who, for the most part, are a, a tiny minority in a larger group of people. And, and those people, tend to be so obsessed with rationality and knowledge that they forget that everyday Europeans, I'm talking about now, because I go all over the world, I meet people everywhere. Everywhere I go in the world, you know, I've never gone anywhere in which I met people who can't dance. So, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, there are some Europeans can't dance and they're ovaries, but everyday people like to eat food, drink, dance, make love, look at art, so forth. You know, whether they're in Finland or they're in Portugal or they're in Slovenia or they're in Siberia, that's what they do. If you go to Asia, the same thing. You go to Africa, the same thing. You see what I'm saying? That's what yeah. everyday people do. And similarly, the nuclear bourgeois family, if we use as an example in political philosophy, the truth is that's not how most Europeans lived. That was forced on them by industrial capitalism and liberal political thought that make us believe that. But most families in the world are extended. They're communities living together. In the past, many children grew up with more than one mother. There's a birth mother, but there's an aunt or 
for somebody who's another mother, multiple fathers. The truth is, a lot of people in Europe still live that way today, but the problem is they don't get to represent Europe. It's the people in power with their stereotypes who do. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in Africa, okay? And same thing in South America. It's the, what we need to do is to connect to and be honest about how people really are, what we love, what we enjoy. And we need to connect ourselves and deal with the, the, the fact that certain ways of ordering reality and life produce suffering, you know? Right now, we suffer from isolation. That's why we reach out in this social medium. Why do we set as the model for families that they be isolated, nuclear families, instead of extended, connected families, communities, and etc. So the answer, I think, is yes, we reject Eurocentrism, and yes, even, and for though, those who claim to construct us as ugly, we know that isn't true. If, if, if many Europeans thought black and indigenous people were so ugly, there wouldn't be so, <laughs> so much European genetic history flowing in, <laughs> in, our, in our bodies. There wouldn't be the creolization of culture. You know, for if, if they really thought we were so ugly, then and, and what we eat and what we do are so bad, Europeans would stop eating chocolate. They won't eat corn. They won't eat potatoes. They won't dance to <laughs> hip hop, samba, reggae. Yeah. They won't put spice in their food. But at the same time, also, they they won't. They 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 would have to pretend. They've constructed a lot of lies at the le level of desire. But that would be another lecture. That would take a long time. <laughs> but there's a lot on the concept of desire with race and colonialism. And the yeah. truth is, we all know this. If someone keeps telling everybody he doesn't like you, it's probably because he desires you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, Professor Lewis. Thanks very much for being here with us. As we don't have the, uh, we don't have any more questions, I think we stop here. Uh, we have already taken a lot of your time, so many thanks for being here, and many thanks for all our audience to uh, be here as well. Thank you. Keep safe, healthy, and despite the difficult times, find moments of joy. It'll yeah. remind you of your humanity and give you strength because, as they said in Mozambique, a luta continua. A luta continua. <laughs> Stay well too and healthy. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. Tchau, tchau, pessoal. Obrigada. Tchau, tchau, obrigada. <laughs>